Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Demetrius here again from Obi Pixel. I just wanted to give you a quick little roundup on some of the details that I'd like to come back to when it comes to my channel. I've made a couple of videos recently about how I'm improving my health, but there'll, there'll be more coming soon. I'm just going through some more changes. But more importantly, what do I want to talk to you about today? Today I want to go back to one of the first loves that I had in my life and that is comics. You probably noticed I've got a couple of videos on my channel with regards to comics and you're more than welcome to go and watch those because you're going to get to see the true story behind those and why I stopped collecting comics and reading comics at the age of 13 and why I am who I am today. All because of comics. Well, just to give you a quick recap if you don't want to go and watch those old videos that's fine at the age of 12 I was in South Africa going through a nice uh, it was a great school and I they, they, they have a bunch of projects for students and I just chose to do a project on my comics massive event hall lots of other people different projects and it was a two-day event they brought in volcanoes and all sorts of projects these kids were doing working on UFOs and stuff it was a lot of fun it was a science project and um I obviously talked about comics and the, the literature behind it and the, the, the way th comics allowed me when I was really young, growing up in Greece, because I, I was, yes, I'm South African born, but I went to Greece at the age of two and I grew up until about 12, 13. And I had no way of learning English then. So I had comics and comics were the, was the way that I learned how to read and write English and become a storyteller, which I wasn't aware of that I was a storyteller until I stop reading comics and, and, and having comics. But when I was at the show doing the event, it was a two day event. The first night, everything was closed at the event place. And then we waited for the next day. And of course, bullies, terrible kids. I'll never forget this. They jumped into the hall, destroyed a whole lot of other kids projects, including mine. Tore out pages of comics, burned some comics, truly destructive. Of course, police came in the following day. They, you know, there was a massive palaver behind this. The whole event was canceled. And of course, these kids were found. They were expelled from school, never to ever complete school again. I don't even know what happened to half those kids. I know some of them were in jail. Two of them had died. I don't know. I don't know how their parents raised those kids and what friends these kids had, but, but they were seriously, there was something wrong with them. But long story short, I lost the need and the want and the, the drive and the passion for comics on that day and I never collected a comic again or read another comic again and by the way I had over 300 comics back issues first editions which if I had today if I had access to those today they'd be worth a lot of money a lot of money what a shame but anyway fast forward to the age of 48 that was two years ago. I am 50 now. Just after COVID, I realized, you know what? I'm doing successfully well in my career. Everything's going well, but I want to go back and take all the stories. And by the way, at the age of 12, when this happened to me with the comics, I literally not just stopped reading comics and stopped collect collecting. You know, I just didn't want to see comics again, but I did continue writing my own. And, I, and my own stories, never mind comics. And I wrote a lot of stories when I was younger and of course did nothing with them. And at the age of 48, two years ago, I decided just after COVID, nah, I got to do something here. And I I was being successful with all my other careers. That I've got like three other careers, but I thought now nah, I got to do something. Start up a YouTube channel, start boosting it. And also more importantly, get my stories out. And I went back, rehashed some of the stories and I published six out of my 50 short kid stories that I've created in the last God knows how many years, 37 years and well, 35 years or so. And um, I then also last year and by the end of the beginning of this year, completed my or rehashed, rewrote some of the storylines for my first initial short novel that I created and wrote for teenagers. Uh, so yes, I've done kids books up to say at the age of eight or nine. And then I've also created teenage books that are between say 12 years old to about, well, between say 11 years old to eh, around 17 or so. And there's sh little short novels, 150 pages. And there was a storyline around dragons and the dragons of Etheria and a beautiful storyline. And um, I finally released it beginning of this year 
during the Year of the Dragon. Very well timed, I'm, I'm sure of that. Anyway, so during the process of building my YouTube channel while I was doing all this, I've been following many people on YouTube and uh, there's incredible resources on YouTube and I followed some really interesting people. Uh, some of my favorites are as from Heel vs. Babyface here in the UK. Gary Beekler from Nodrotic in the United States and Texas. Uh, Critical Drinker from Scotland. Mauler from Wales here. Ryan Kinnell and Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers. And gosh, I can go on and on and on. X-Ray Girl. Shadiversity. Chad from Australia. Uh, I can go on and on and on. There's so many of them. And yeah, especially some of the other shows that they have, like Friday Night Tights. Fantastic show every Friday. And just in general, started enjoying their, their channels. And um, they sparked something in me because they introduced me to a company and a person that has blown my mind. And that was Eric July from Ripperverse. And I immediately realized, okay, this is something different here. And Eric July is, is, a, is a force to be reckoned with in the industry. And of course, now he's into media creation and he's right, building comics and, and even latest stuff is like animation. But more importantly, Eric July really made an impression on me. He's a black guy, he's an American guy, but he's, you know, very talented. And you would think that Marvel and DC would do things like this but no in the last 10 years uh, from what i've seen because i've tried to go back to comics for the last 10 years and, and it's just oh my goodness gracious me it's not what i used to have when i was a kid it's not what i fell in love with these days it's absolutely obnoxious trash that has been created not all not you know 99 percent of it is terrible there's an occasional here and there comic uh, comics that are released, which are independents, which are amazing, absolutely amazing. But Marvel and DC, who had 60 to 70 years of intellectual property, have completely destroyed their own industries. And not just the comics. Gosh, they've done it in the film industry. They've done it in the television industry. They've done it in the music industry as well with other companies. Like, for example, Disney. What is wrong with you guys? What is wrong with you the last 10 years? You've bought all these intellectual properties and what have you done? You've injected your own political, motivational nonsense and crap into these films and you've hired political activists to create storylines and what have you done? You not only have alienated your fans because you're telling your fans they're wrong, you not only have created terrible writing, it's absolutely atrocious writing. God, I never wrote this badly even when I was a kid. Oh, and of course... Projecting your lives into the storylines instead of actually keeping these characters and building the characters. And most of all, turning everything upside down and destroying characters. What is wrong with you, Marvel and DC? What is wrong with you, Disney and Walt, and, and, and just in general, Walt Disney and Hollywood? And the media industry when it comes to print and, and comics? What is wrong with you guys? Have you forgotten the most important thing in business? It doesn't make any sense to me what you guys are doing. Ideological nonsense, politically motivated nonsense, DEI crap. And you know what? Look at the numbers, you absolute Neanderthals. Look at the numbers. The numbers don't lie. <laughs> they just don't lie. And then on top of that, what have you done? You try to gain some type of audience from new audience, you know, the modern audience, but you've alienated 90% of the rest of the audience, you absolute buffoons. Oy. You can't not help yourself and rant about this because it's a tragedy. And I'm Greek. And we call these things Greek tragedies. What, is, what have you done? I can go back and buy back issues, absolutely, when it comes to comics. And I can go back and look at older films and older uh, um, uh, television series. And they, even though they're older, they have incredible writing, incredible plot, incredible storylines. 
I don't know if you can actually hear there's an ambulance inside. I hope you can't hear it. Anyway, and um, just no political nonsense in it, you know, just truth, absolute truth. And above all, entertaining. Why do we go and we buy a comic? Why do we buy a book? Why do we watch a television series? Why do we watch a film? We use it for escaping the common day. When on top of that, what you're doing is you're projecting everything that is around the world today, everything that's crap in the world today, you're just projecting it into those industries, including music. And what are we doing? We're never escaping anything and you're turning people into absolute zombies. What you've done though, is you've woken people up because you know what? The fans are not interested. The numbers show Hollywood is in pieces. You're losing money left over and center. The comic industry has been destroyed because of the biggest names in the industry, Marvel and, and, and DC, who've created absolute abominations. The people you've hired are not interested in your company. They aren't interested in their own political motivation. They couldn't give a damn. And what are you doing? You're losing money. You know what? Money's going to run out. And when it does, you guys are done. You're finished. And guess who's going to win? The independents, YouTubers, because why? We all speak the truth. People around the world, the normies, they're interested in the truth from now on because they know what's happened. After COVID, the majority of the world woke up and they started to realize all the nonsense and the absolute apathy that governments and organizations and corporate companies have against their own customers and, and staff and just fans around the world. And people woke up to this and they're no longer taking this nonsense. They don't, they don't, they don't want to take your shit. They're certainly not going to buy your shit. But let's be a bit more positive here because it's not all doom and gloom because we now have something I got introduced via YouTube and all these wonderful people I follow, which I've mentioned already in the video. And I got introduced to Eric July and Ripperverse, the team. Not directly, but I would love to one day. And their first campaign was to create a brand new storyline of a brand new character and a brand new universe. And they created ISOM, number one. What a fantastic storyline. A great beginning to something new, something entertained. Well structured, well written, very well illustrated. I mean, Eric July partners up with Cliff Richards and Gabe Altayeb and because these guys are also legends in the industry. And they created something truly unique, something that's never been seen before. Yes. A little bit of a spoiler here. Story ISOM 1, you know, Avery Silman, his character, wants a superhero known as ISOM in, in, in a place called Flores Park in Texas, which is quite nice. It's concentrating around Texas, which I like. It's obviously where Ripperverse is. This person has retired to a quiet life as a rancher, right? And his sister, Sorry about the spoilers, everybody. His sister, and no matter what I say, by the way, you know, I'm not spoiling anything. Believe me, the books are incredible. His sister Altona calls him to, you know, to visit Darren Fontaine, an old friend, who's become very fearful of a, a as a, fearful as a criminal. You know, he's become one of these criminals, and they want to find a missing family friend who's last seen basically with this person, Darren, and. Um, this chap, Avery, the main the main act, um, protagonist, which is in this case Isom, his visit becomes very challenging on that day and he encounters what we call excepts, which are special beings with ability. And then he faces the conflict involving, unfortunately, not just law enforcement, but having to involve the Alpha Core. Because these guys are exceptionally gifted and with magical with with powers basically law enforcement and of course another character gets introduced someone who comes in and beats the crap out of certain individuals like Yaira and just a powerful adversary they're going up against named Santuan and just you know with whom this guy Isom well Avery has a history with and um, the story sort of centers around Avery's confrontation with Dar Darren and the search for his missing friend. And you know, you know from the story one, you know from this is going to build up. You know, you know this is the foundation. This is the the, the, the plank that they have to walk on to be able to jump into the storyline. And this was, this, it just blew me away. 
Bear in mind, I haven't collected and read comics since I was 13 years old. And I got this after the first campaign, so literally last year. And gosh, I've read this at least 10 times. And I absolutely love the story. But then you think, oh, okay, that Marvel and DC could create comics like this. Well, no, you're a bunch of morons. You've, you've created absolute nonsense and trash with intellectual property that you've built over 70 years, which should be so easy to do. So simple to do. But no, 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 no. You messed all that up. And of course, you've destroyed your fan base. And then what does Ripperverse and Eric July come and do? They created something brand new, more entertaining, well-written, clean, concise writing, very good writing, and great storytelling when it comes to illustrations as well. Ah, uh, well done, Eric July and Ripperverse. Well done. But hey, that's not all. <laughs> Eric July didn't put the brakes on like all these other big companies, a bunch of morons who put the brakes on and want to milk the heck or the crap out of the stuff that they create. No, 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 no. No time to waste. No time to waste. Mathematically, when the brain thinks when it comes to business, Eric July is a genius. And they created something quite remarkable with I Someone. It was a very successful campaign. It was over 1.2 million pound, uh, dollars. And that was incredible to see, but uh, they were not finished. So what Eric Jalad did with the Ripperverse team is called on back again, Cliff Richards and Gaia Baltaib, and then really built upon Isom and built out this character Isom 2. Now, I really thought Isom 2, and I still think today that Isom 2 is a better book. In fact, it actually, this one has more in terms of the characters. Um, it's overall just better folded as a storyline. It, it, all the characters fold really well in the storyline. They really do. And I'm just going to drop the microphone a little bit lower here. And I'd say the, sto the, the, the storyline flows a lot smoother than ISOM 1. Of course it would be because you've learned from ISOM 2. You've learned from ISOM 2 what you need to do with the characters. So well done, Eric and the team. And the, 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 this whole Isom character, um, the, in fact, the whole book is a, is a little bit more humorous. It's got a little bit more humor as well, which is really nice to see. It's, it's you know, I laughed at some of the, the things like the redhead uh, kid who's sighing about the poser sort of cosplay girl. <laughs> and then Santuan also, you know, this evil um, force uh, cracked me up as well. I mean, the way he disses the multiverses. But there's lots of good humor basically all around in this book. And the, the, they introduce the Projexus founder, and of course Projexus will be coming in to the later books with regards to another character, but it, 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 this whole thing then added a new wrinkle to the story because now it's starting to build out the Ripperverse, and it changes the dynamics. So that's what this book does, it changes the dynamics of the world. And both Santman and Darren uh, were given sort of a lot more personality in this, and it's really, it's a really good book, and um, or comic. and in, in all honesty, when I just see ISOM 1 and 2, I'd be on, honestly 100% satisfied with just these two as, you know, the level of quality, storytelling, passion, depth, from here on out, you know, just to continue on from here on outwards. And uh, fine, no problem, continue with the same people because it works. It works for the storyline. But the fact that this is only book two, okay, the second campaign, and it shows that there's so much room to grow with these characters, especially with Avery and, um, well, Ison. And, um, gosh. For anyone out there who's never read comics or has read comics in the past that's not happy with the new comics today, Ripperverse is no joke, people. <laughs> it's not a joke. Ripperverse is the real deal. I, like I said, I had a lot of comics when I was young. Yes, I didn't grow up further on from 13 all the way to 48 actually looking and reading other comics because i was really despondent but i've gone back to try and find those back issues and i'm slowly getting those and in all honesty in the last 10 years and probably a bit longer i haven't found anything that's useful or great to read or just without having any politically motivated activist type of content in it it's just atrocious what's out there today back issues not a problem go and find the back issues absolutely Anybody who wants to get into comics, go and get back issues. There's, an, you know, there's loads of people have, you speak to the people that I've mentioned to you about the YouTubers. They'll guide you in the right direction. I mean, some of them have guided me. And 
Ripper versus here to stay, I can say that right now. I mean, the, what they did with ISOM 2 is they cemented themselves in the market. And now they're knocking on the front door. After ISOM 2, they were knocking on the front door. And DC and War and and um, and Marvel, you guys are in serious trouble. But hey, it gets better. And this is where thing re things really changed. And oh, I'm so happy because when I first fell in love with comics, I fell in love with some really good illustrators and storytellers especially with my Batman, Superman, and Spider-Man series, the original series, and um, the OG stuff. I'm so glad, I'm so glad that Eric July stepped, well, his team stepped away from their own material and decided to bring on board industry legends and talent into Ripperverse and produce something that would build on the stories of Isom 1 and 2 but really isolate a very interesting team that was introduced and that's the Alpha Core team and wow they created Alpha Core 1 whoo damn <laughs> the fact that they brought upon themselves to bring in Chuck Dixon and Joe Bennett that says it all how do you beat, first of all, the storytelling from Chuck Dixon and Joe Bennett's illustrations and artistry? How do you beat illustrations that look like this? Let alone the storytelling. Just, this became my, f my best and most favorite comic that I have read in 30 odd years stunningly written great storyline great characters really fleshed out the alpha core team Whew, man created such a beautiful book when it comes to illustrations as well this is exceptionally well illustrated can't wait to get my foil pack of this one i'd love to get that one i want to get these signed as well but my goodness gracious me, what they did with Alpha Core is they truly, as Ripperverse, you truly have cemented yourself in the industry now and become the leader, in my opinion. Marvel and DC, you guys are done. You are done. You are finished. And of course, Disney, who owns oh, you morons, absolute Neanderthals. Marvel and DC. First of all, Marvel, you're in pieces now because of what Walt Disney's done to you. DC, you, you're not any better. Even hiring James Gunn is not going to save you. But the fact that you cannot produce anything for the last 15 years that's making you money, all of you, the whole of Hollywood, the entire media industry, just shows that whatever you've tried has not just not worked, it's backfired on you. You're absolute idiots, and let alone bad businessmen. What's the, what's the number one thing in business? You know, when I did my MBA in business, even though I'm a cybersecurity professional, digital photographer and professional photographer, forensics investigator, instructor for, for companies, uh, consultant in the field, project manager, program manager, God, I can go on and on and on, Pro programming specialist. I mean, God, there's nothing I haven't done in IT industries. And also an author, write books, write children's stories, write novels, public speaking, done everything, right? And, and the crazy thing is, I did an MBA in business and, you know, one of the first things I was taught in business was turnover is vanity, right? So it's important for a company to have that vanity to produce, you know, show themselves as larger than life in, in, in the world, of course, because it builds morale, it builds excitement. But of course, it's just vanity. Profit is sanity. You need profit in a company, otherwise your business cannot really be sane enough to continue running. And without that, you can't really run and function as a business. But the most important thing in a company in any business is <laughs> cash flow because cash flow is king so all these large companies what have you done you've targeted your fans and you've destroyed the intellectual properties you've pushed your fans away your loyal fan base of 90 percent of your loyal fan base to try and gain a, a percentage of one or two percent that you never had before which by the way the fans that you currently have right now those political activist kind of fans and the politically motivated and DEI and whatever. So I have no problem with people being who they are. 
But what's happening is you're projecting all that kind of life into everything and it's, what have you done? You've destroyed everything. You've turned everything upside down. You've lost 60 years of intellectual property. You're losing money left, right and center. You've let go of your fans. So you've lost your, your, your turnover. You've lost your profits. And you have no cash flow. Because you don't even have the fans anymore because you've pissed them off. My God, you have failed on all fronts. Whoever the business people are behind all this, you're morons. Irrespective of whether you can go and get your loans from the DEI companies, Bridge and all these other companies. Yeah, whatever. They're going to want to call back on those loans and they're going to have to have you paying those loans back. And then what's going to happen? You won't have the money to do so, so you'll collapse. They don't give a damn about you. The people you've hired in your company don't give a damn about you. They only give a damn about their own political motivations. And what's happened? Trash has been created. The comic industry has been put to, to its knees. The television industry has been put to its knees. We've got absolute trash on television. The film industry, let's not go there because the last 15 years have been abominations. The music industry, well, that's always in pieces. So what do you have? Hollywood and the media industry, you're done. Because the independents, the talented, skilled people that are out there that truly still believe in honest truth, honest to God, good storytelling, truthful storytelling, irrespective of who you are and what you are in the world, irrespective of what color you are, what card cost you are, what creed you are, gives a damn about all that. Good writing. Of course, in comics, good illustration. In films, non-inflated budgets like we have currently today. I mean, a little bit of a segue. I can't believe that Disney <laughs> created, well, purchased Star Wars to after so many years to have not just lost money, but gone into almost bankruptcy and now have created the Acolyte which is in my opinion is the echo shite, but <laughs> I've seen the third episode as well. Oh my goodness gracious me. I cannot understand how $181 million was spent to create eight episodes and each episode costing $22.5 million. Yes, my mathematics is that good. How did you guys spend that much money on a singular episode? When episode three is your nail in your coffin, atrocious disaster if you take that amount of money you've had in one episode that's godzilla minus one which absolutely dominated in the box office and made a huge profit that's sound of freedom which by the way hollywood suppressed for five years in the shelves disgusting on you you should be disgusted with yourselves you let go and you let down your fans and you let down yourselves and more importantly you let down your families and the kids of this world 20 million dollars to create a, an absolute marvel of a film which dominated in the box office and made a serious profit because you were trying to stifle the story the truth are you kidding me i'm a digital forensics expert i've been that for 25 years i've worked on cases that Believe me, you don't want to work on. I worked on pedophile cases here in the UK, in the Netherlands, in the United States. What you saw in the film Sound of Freedom is tame in comparison to the filth that is happening out there. Don't try and preach to us. Don't try and preach to the normies and the people in the world, because we know now the truth. You see, what COVID-19 did, and I'm, I don't, I'm not scared of talking about it, what COVID-19 did is that, yes, it was a disaster in the world, but it also woke up a lot of people. The fans no longer are going to take shit, and you've now lost everything. So the independents, and by the way, YouTubers, are going to win the battle. It's inevitable. You done, you've gone past, you've opened up Pandora's box and you've gone past po the point of no return. But Eric July and Ripperverse and all the YouTubers that I follow, they are speaking the truth, ultimate truth, without lying about anything. 
There's no need to deviate from the, from anything else because you guys have become the companies out there that are producing absolute trash. You've become a joke. You've become a parody. South Park is making jokes on you, and not, then they're not even able to catch up with you guys because that's how much of a parody you've become. Sad and disappointing. It's truly sad. Let's get let's get done with the raving now. Well, the, the ranting. Let's get now into something truly more successful. Eric July and his team did an exceptional job with the three. And I call these the trifecta. You know, the ice on one, ice on two, and alpha core. And I thought, that's enough, man. I tell you what, I can live with these three and I, I'm 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 done. I'm happy. But no 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 no. You see, Eric July has got a spark that's fired up in him and I'm so thankful because he's a, what I call a visionary in the world. Oh man, what the next topic was, the next sort of push forward was something else. It was truly something else. And um, you know, the idea of Alpha Core and, and creating this great team and masterminding these characters is really impressive but now they're going to become even more prominent because eric july and ripperverse they've been holding aces in their pockets for a while i'm sure they got more aces after this as well but the key is that they're, they're, they're just they know the truth and they can see it and they're hungry for it and that's what you should be you should be like a rocky balboa you know hungry to win under all circumstances and not knowing your limitations not caring about your limitations not looking at what other people are doing. Who cares? De creating a new industry. And, and, and rebuilding comics. But the right way. Because even 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 um, Joe Bennett, Chris, um, uh, Chuck Dixon, and um, uh, Gay Baltab, they, you know, they've got their own stuff also happening. And it's incredible to see as well. But whew, when Eric July pulled this out of the bag, I was so impressed. I was watching your videos over and over every so often. You know, the, the Friday Night Tides, and I was watching um, Rip and Silverback. Uh, basically, it's Eric July and um, Az from Heel vs. Babyface, and just so many other shows. And I was starting to see a natural progression of the storyline in the Ripperverse. And Eric July, with his team, pulled out an ace and took this character, Yaira, that was briefly introduced in the storyline, which had a very beautiful, mysterious presence about her and let's face it you know we like powerful characters heroic characters man or woman doesn't matter but also good storylines good characters if they're bad characters let them be bad characters you know they must own that right but i'm talking about good as in well written and um of course what's wrong with being a beautiful person Nothing wrong with it. Some people think it's a curse. I don't give a damn about what they think. But more importantly, they took the storyline of Yaira and created this. And brought out this year the campaign of Yaira, which was the most successful campaign from what I've seen. And wow, not only is she a, we know this is a wonderful character, powerful woman, great history. She's got an incredible past. She's been through serious amount of pain. She's lost so much. She's had to go through so many things. And this is a stunning, stunningly well put comic. But here's the best part. Eric July goes and hires, or brings in, I should say. Because I don't think he treats people as employees. I think he treats people as, as equals in his company, from what I've seen. And it just it, show, it shows in his work. And he brings in two spectacular writers that I have followed for many years in the film industry. And one of their comics as well that I loved. And he brings in Jen and Sylvia Soska to create the Soska sisters basically to create this beautiful storyline of Yaira and of course you know Deborah Carita which I haven't seen her previous comics so I'd love to see anything new that she might have done as well but I'm, I'm impressed now yes it's not the same kind of illustrations as Alpha Core no it won't be that's Chuck Dixon and Joe Bennett we're talking legends in the industry but don't put that you know don't dis Yaira because this is exceptionally well written and the, the illustrations are really well illustrated really well illustrated and I would say this is definitely my favorite now and, it, and it's only my favorite because 
as much as I love the Alpha Core illustrations and a good storyline, the storyline in Yaira for me is a tight storyline. It's well folded together. It flows well. It's got a beautiful character. I mean, let's face it, I mean, Yara is, is a sexy woman as well, eh? Powerful, right? Powerful, enigmatic figure. Enigmatic figure in Flores Park in Texas. Again, around the Texas area. She's seen as a force of nature in her city and the residents in the city. And of course, the Alpha Core team really don't understand her. They really are, 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 are sort of putting her in the same group as the baddies, right? The, the, the evil tyrants, but nah. They don't really truly know her. They treat her as a threat. And then after a brutal and unresolved sort of battle, the Alpha Core commander Brian Solaria orders basically Yara to leave the city and uh, never return. But of course, oh, come on, this is Yara. Do you think that she's going to take his commands? Are you joking with me? She's a powerful woman. There's nothing wrong with powerful women. We see that a lot even in James Bond series. I mean, at least so far, I hope they don't mess that up as well. If they mess up that intellectual property, I'll be highly depressed. But more importantly, you know, she defies this command and Yara returns to Flores Park because she's driven by her mysterious motives and her past, right? And the beautiful thing about the storyline, what the Soska sisters did, is they created a beautiful origin storyline, her ancient past, which is shrouded in mystery and um, sort of primeval sort of past that influences her present and it actually comes back and haunts her. And, and, beautiful, significant, long-lasting repercussions from that. And it explores what happens to Yara in the past and how that is catching up to her today and how it is a, how it really is affecting everything and everyone around her and forcing them basically to face the consequences of her choices. But here's the thing, everyone misunderstands her, except one person, but more importantly, She's very misunderstood, and yet she's such a wonderful character. And it's really well written, and I'll say this why. You see, Jen and Sylvia, I love you girls. I think you're amazing. Um, when I come to the United States, I have to meet you girls, and I'm definitely going to hug you. I don't give a damn what other people say. Keeping my hands off you, I don't know yet. But <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the more important thing is, I just love your work. And I remember... Jen and Sylvia Soska, for those of you who don't know who they are, let's call them the Twisted Sisters, but they've done incredible comics and, and good films, really good horror films. And what I really loved when I was young is a, a comic that I lost, unfortunately, in that, in that horrific nonsense that those bullies did. One of my favorite comics. And um, they, they just, they just, really utterly destroyed my my thought process and just this the it really led to me sort of uh, you know not wanting to have comics again but the storylines were very cool in the back issues and then around around um much later in life right the soska sisters created something truly remarkable for Marvel, surprising they were working for Marvel at the time. And um, gosh, Marvel, you're a bunch of morons. Absolute Neanderthals with politically motivated activists who are just destroying your company. You misunderstood and you downplayed the Yara, the, the Yara, I was going to say the Yara sisters, uh, the Soska sisters. You downplayed them and you didn't treat them very well and you're morons because you've lost a gem. I'm saying gem because Jen and, you know, uh, Sylvia, Soska are a gem because they come together in a duo pack and what they did for marvel is they created this wonderful comic which i finally found again i went back to all the back issues and i actually looked back and i said oh, i've got to get this because this book black widow whoo there are no holes barred in this mag this comic these girls i don't know how they got this this mag this comic i say magazine this comic green lit I, I honestly don't know how marvel accepted this because I love the way they didn't hold back in this comic. Well done, Jen and Sylvia. Well done on this one. And you can see your writing style. You can see your character-driven emotional style in Yaira. In fact, you can see yourselves in Yaira and in Black Widow without tampering with the characters because... 
you know, for those of you who don't know who the Soska sisters are, I mean, I can tell you right now, they're not just beautiful women on the outside, because you are, Soska girls, Jen and Sylvia, you're stunning women, okay? But the beauty that's more important is what you have on the inside, because I can see from your previous work and your films, and the way you are with fans, and the way you project yourself when you talk and you do these shows, and you're on YouTube, and you communicate with people and fans, you can see your heart, both of you. We can see what you have. As a man, I can tell you, I, I love your hearts. I love your compassion. I love your, your, your love for this industry. And I love the way you're writing because it comes across on Yaira. You can see it. This, this tormented person who has incredible depth, a woman of substance and a powerful, powerful, magical person who is, who's tormented by her past, but knows what she's got to do, knows herself. It's, it's truly a remarkably strong person, which I think comes across from your perspectives. And you're not messing around with the character, which is amazing. I love this. I, I, I lo Yara, for me, is definitely my favorite. It may not be the, the, the most highly illustrated, the beautifully illustrated stuff like Alpha Koi is, but the storyline together with the illustration is unbelievable. Stunning. And of course, this is why Eric July is also trialing out the statues, right? He's bringing out statues. And, you know, for people who are collectors, and I tell you what, I can't believe what Eric July and Ripperverse did to introduce Yaira. Oh my goodness, they started dipping into the tank of animation. And they created a very good animation for Alpha Core. And of course, Yaira. And I was like, oh my goodness gracious me. Are we seeing a repeat in history? Are we seeing the new studio? Rip of us. Stunning work. Stunning work, guys. Eric July and the team at Rip of us and all the people that you brought on board. Chuck Dixon, Joe Bennett. You know. Unbelievable. Cliff Richards, Gabe Altayeb, the Soska sisters, this lady here, Deborah Carita, which I need to get more of. Oh. And of course, hey, a little cheeky plug. I went and got my little foil pack. <sighs> oh, I love these foil packs. They're amazing. How can anyone go wrong with just these four? How can anyone go wrong with these? How? With a little cheeky <laughs> Black Widow. How? Eric July and Ripperverse, you guys have caused me to start collecting comics again. And this is what I began collecting. I've got some back issues anyway. You know, I'm collecting all sorts of stuff. But I cannot believe what I see. Because finally I can say that it's it's incredible. It, it really is incredible. And I, and I wanted to create this video. It may be a bit long and I apologize for those of you who are watching. But I wanted to truly thank all the YouTubers that I've been following, you know, as from Heel vs. Babyface and Nodrotic and Critical Drinker and Mauler and Ryan Kinnell and Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers and, and just everyone and Eric July and Ripperverse and just all of you who've who've given me the insights as and building my spark in me again to basically do what I've always wanted to do apart from writing my, my stories and whatever is to finally get it into my head that one day before I die I've added one more thing into my bucket list, which I've now activated. And that is, I'm going to write my own storyline. I can't illustrate very well. I can illustrate to some extent, but I'm going to get a decent illustrator if I can't get my hands on Chuck Dixon. But, <laughs> and I'm going to write a storyline for a comic. Because I've been brewing on a storyline for the last 30 years. And it is incredible. And I think once I've completed the storyline, Eric, July, and I know you probably get a lot of these requests in your post and your mail and all that, but I honestly believe that I, if I could trust anybody with the storylines that I've created, or that I will eventually finish creating this one that I'm working on, I could only trust you guys because I can't trust the other industries that are out there. I can't trust the other companies. I want to trust the companies that have given me the best entertainment I've ever had in the last two years with these four books. I can only trust Ripperverse now. I truly believe you guys have got the magic formula back again because what you've done is you've gone back to basics. 
you've decided to go back to what the back issues was all about. Great writing. Great characters. Character-driven plots. Very nice twisted plots. Incredible illustrations. Great flow. Beautiful continuity. Oh, you're doing a great job with continuity. Great job with continuity. Yes, every single comic is an individual and you can pretty much read every single one of them individually, absolutely. But once you go through one, ISOM 1, ISOM 2, Alpha Core and then Yaira, whoa, what a beautiful progression and continuity line that you have. I mean, that's a true rip of us. 100%. I've, I've purchased your merchandise. I've got the, the, the what's his name? The, I think the hat, if I remember correctly. I have the, 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 the pullover. We call it a pullover, but it's like a, it's like a jacket, right? I've, oh, you know, I can't wait for the extra stuff. Of course, I want Eric July's hat. I mean, that would be a nice one. <laughs> As he gets in his videos, he gets a lot of requests for that. But more importantly, I wanted to create this video and I want to say thank you. Because now I'm in the position where I know I can I can write my story. Well, I can finish my story actually. And gosh, I can't wait to bring it out in the industry. And um, I would honestly, you know, I will I will send it to you, Eric July. And whether you read it or not, it doesn't matter. Uh, I just need to send it to people that I trust. And um, I want to thank all the YouTubers that I have followed over the last two years. Even though I've only just recently got my YouTube channel up and running. <laughs> um, I've, I've finally got monetized, which is wonderful, but I haven't really got into learning everything about the monetization process. I'm still new at this, but you know, I'm quite technical, so I'll figure it out pretty quickly. But because I've been traveling a lot and I haven't been able to make a couple of videos here and there, it's been a bit tricky, but I'm making videos now again. And now I wanted to make this video because I wanted to thank all the YouTubers I followed, the YouTubers and people that are following me on my channel. I wanted to thank you for subscribing and following me. I appreciate that. Those of you who are and my inspiration when it comes to storytelling, like of course now Ripperverse is another inspiration of mine. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for reigniting my passion for comics again after 37 years, eh? And um, uh, what can I say? I feel like a 13 year old again, restarting my journey with comics again, except this time now I'm able to speak and write fluently and more importantly, I have my own storytelling. And um, I've been quite successful with my own storybooks and uh, I can't wait to bring out my actual comic and I don't care how long it takes. It's got to be done exceptionally well, the way Ripperverse is doing stuff, because that's the way comics should always be. Well written, well constructed, well illustrated, great storylines, truthful stories, entertaining stories and non-politically motivated. Wow. Once again, my name is Demetrius from Obi Pixel. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. All the details for the show that I've already spoken about on this video will be in the description. I want to thank everybody for watching me today and accepting to stay on this long and thanking everybody at the Ripperverse and the team of Ripperverse plus Eric July and of course all the YouTubers as you know who you are, Gary from Nodrotic as from Heel vs. Babyface, Mauler, Critical Drinker, Geeks and Gamers, all of you, uh, gosh, Shadowversity, all of you guys, Chrissy Mayer, one of my favorite comedians, X-Ray Girl, fantastic people. I mean, when I come to the United States, which I am going to do, I'm going to come to one of your shows and I'm going to meet up with you guys because I've got to, I've got to congrat congratulate you all you guys face to face because I'm a 50 year old now and I don't feel 50 and I, a lot of people say I don't look 50 now because I'm getting healthier but more importantly I have my youth back irrespective of what the industry is doing the different industries you guys are my entertainment Ripperverse you are my not just entertainment but my my, my energy spark that I need and I can't wait to see where all this goes. I can't wait to see your next campaign. And um, just everybody that you work with, because I, I think you've got an incredible team. Keep it small. Keep it a family. Be honest always. Thank you for paying, for giving us, not paying us, but for giving us such a 
wonderful set of comics. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your passion. Thank you for your drive, your understanding, your business savvy, of course, and uh, your loyalty. And above all, your understanding that, well, we want to be entertained. And of course, we're going to put our money where our mouths are. And I don't speak about stuff I don't believe. I just don't see the point. So, of course, I don't just talk the talk. I've gone ahead and I purchased the books myself. I have no problem. I live in Wales. It costs a lot of money to deliver it. But I don't give a damn because at the end of the day, I know what I'm getting. And my goodness gracious me, that is not just entertainment. This has been an investment. And I can't believe what a wonderful investment this has been. It's keeping me sane for the last two years. Yes, just these four books alone. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. So thank you all. Once again, my name is Demetrius from Ubi Pixel. I appreciate your time and I'm signing out.